show you in this video a few of the ways that we can create tasks and then we can organize our tasks. We saw previously that we could simply come in here to a, a task name that was blank on an empty row in our uh, table view and we could simply start typing in the name of various tasks and would create them for us. We can link them together as we saw, we can set the duration so forth and so on. We can also insert a task. For example, let's say I forgot task C here. I would select task D either by selecting the row or just clicking on that particular task name. And then I can come up here to, if I'm in the task ribbon, I can come up here and select insert task. That's one way to do it. I can also just right click on that row and select insert task and it will let me insert that task. And then I can actually name that task just as before. I can also, you notice if I right click, I can also delete a task and I can also change some of the properties. I can make it inactive, I can schedule, uh, schedule it manually if I wanted to put a constraint on it. As I mentioned earlier for these lessons, we're going to auto schedule everything. I can also double click on the task name or on the task row and it will bring up the task information dialog box where I can set some other information about the task. So I can change the name here, I can change the duration, and you'll, as you can see there's lots of uh, different information I can change about the task. So if this particular task uses something other than the standard uh, calendar, I can say that this one's going to use a 24-hour calendar, for example. Um, I can also put in different notes about this task. I can also have different custom fields that I create. So that's where you can get to all this information um, about your particular task. Now when we uh, have a project that's fairly large, we may have hundreds or thousands of tasks in our project. So what we might want to do is create different summary and sub-summary tasks in order to keep track of uh, all our various tasks in our project. I'm going to insert a task above task A here, and I will just call this summary 1. And in order to get all these tasks uh, summarized by this particular summary task, what I do is I select the tasks I want to uh, have come underneath this summary. Um, I just, what I did there is I just selected the row two, I held down the shift key and selected row five. And you notice up here under the task ribbon, there is an indent and outdent feature. So I'm going to indent that and now, you notice that this task changes so it looks different on the Gantt chart. And you'll notice that it's actually going to summarize the information about these tasks underneath it. So if I say this is two days, this is three days, this is four days, this is five days, and I happen to put in my predecessor information here, you notice it then summarizes and say, well, these groups of tasks here are going to take a total of 14 days. I th can then create a, another summary, say summary 2, and you notice that this is because I'm creating it right after task D, it got indented, so I don't want this to be another task that's indented under summary 1, so I'm going to come up here, I'm going to outdent that, okay? And so then I'm going to say task E, task F, task G. And once again, I'm going to make these summarized by summary 2. This can be very useful because what we might want to do is we might want to not only help further organize our tasks, but also we might want to be able to look at, for example, how much does a certain subcomponent or subdeliverable of our project cost? And if we find that it may be 
fairly costly, we may ask ourselves, well, are we really the right people to do that? Should we perhaps subcontract that out instead? The other neat thing about these summary um, tasks is that I can collapse them. So notice here I can click on that, and that allows me to have a much cleaner look to my project. Okay, And you can create um, sub-summaries. So if I want to do that here, can do something like this and you'll notice that here I have uh, a component that is underneath summary 2 okay but it's summar summarizing some other sub deliverable here Okay, so you can use this indenting and outdenting to very effectively organize um, your project in order to be able to view things uh, much easier. You can also, if you select on a particular uh, line here and you come up here and you say you want to insert a summary task, it will create a summary task and a new task underneath that for you as well. Now I can simply move those back out if I want. To, to whatever level I need them to be at. One last thing I want to show you here is a special kind of task called a milestone. So let's say that we um, have a particular um, milestone, our foundation is complete, and we want to mark this particular uh, event. We can do that in a number of ways. Uh, one is if you double click on there and go to the task properties, um, you will see that you, we can set, send this or set this to be a milestone under advanced. So if we go to advanced properties and say mark task as milestone, we can do that. You can also, um, let me leave that one up there and I'm going to make uh, another example. We can also just change the duration to zero days. Okay, that will also um, simply um, make this into a milestone because a milestone generally does not consume any time on our project. Okay, so that's how we can enter a milestone in. If we want to change that from not being a milestone, we can just double click on the um, task information dialog and uncheck that marked task as a milestone. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of uh, some of the things that we can achieve with our um, tasks and some of the more advanced ways that we can organize our tasks in our project.